Well, everyone, we just released the July update for the Met Bowl, and now we're checking in with my wife, Sue, and co-owner of Topher Spin Meteorites for another update. Sue? Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well. So yes, um, as Topher said, we are doing a Met Bowl quarterly update to get us uh, caught up. Um, Wednesday night, we uh, just a few days ago, we did part one, which was July 2022. And tonight we are recording during a bonus session on a Saturday night. Uh, we're recording part two, and that is um, all classifications that were approved and published in the Met Bowl during the month of August. And then uh, then this coming Wednesday, we will be wrapping up with part three, which is September classifications. And then hopefully we will be a little bit more caught up and uh, you'll be seeing us uh, back going back to the monthly updates. All right, well, part two, let's get it underway. And that is the month of August. And for the month of August, we had 122 um, meteorite classifications approved and published in the Met Bowl. And unfortunately, there were, uh, there were no falls uh, approved for the month of August, just 122 fines. We did have a um, somewhat wide variety of classifications, not as many as last month, um, but we had 37 different uh, classification types. And uh, I'm going to spend most of my time just talking about that. I'm not going to get too deep into um, stories about each one, as we're just trying to kind of uh, give quick updates for each month so we can get caught up. Uh, let's just look at the classifications um, for our L and LL chondrites. So um, as you can see, we had 47 of those. And there were two that really uh, stood out to me. Um, the uh, LL3.15, uh, um, that is... Um, that the very first one of those classifications, um, unbelievably, actually um, was classified in 1895. Um, it's called, um, I believe, Bishanpur, and um, it was um, either a fall or a find in India. And then there were not, uh, there weren't any other meteorites classified under this um, classification until 1979, <laughs> and it was two from um, Antarctica. And it wasn't until 2015 that uh, there were uh, there was another classification that was just in a normal place. Um, I don't remember what it was, but um, not in Antarctica. So you know, a hundred years in between the first and um, the second of this uh, um, this particular type of classification. Um, so it's a type three chondrite, and those are um, divided into subtypes. And um, from the 3.00, which are like the least metamorphosed, um, metamorphosed to uh, 3.9, which is metamorphosed to like type four levels. Um, so that's about um, all I can tell you about that one. But I, the one that I thought was a little bit more interesting was the LL3-7. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't usually see um, ranges that wide um, from three all the way to seven. Now this is the um, first ever classified with that classification and it is the only one. <laughs> so yes, so this um, LL3-7, it's a brecciated um, ordinary chondrite. Um, it has several um, shock dark and uh, class and the type seven class are about five millimeters in size and they're they're set in that type um, three host lithology. So um, those type seven class show uh, triple junctions, um, just a very interesting uh, meteorite and wonder when we will see one of these again, hopefully not a hundred years from now. Chondrites that are metamorphosed nearly to the point of melting um, when you get it all the way up to seven. And then the three, um, you know, as I mentioned, is the, the more least metamorphosed. Let's move on to the H chondrites and the carbonations. So with uh, these, we have, you know, um, the H chondrites, nothing too, um, you know, extraordinary there. Um, but with the CVOX3, uh, we've been seeing a lot of these lately. Um, this one, um, it has a few really like low NWA numbers too. There's an NWA. Um, 029, there's an NWA4685, but um, the very first one of these was found in 2007. But um, unbelievably, it was not actually classified until just last year. I think the first one was classified in 2020, and we've had some gaps, but pretty much like it, we're seeing these come in month to month, um, you know, one or two. So um, we had one in August, but that makes a total of 25, and it's just a number that just keeps growing. So um, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that one okay. for sure. 
Um, and um, I know we've looked at a few classification types already, but just wanted to point out that we do have, um, I have a column set up on the left and that shows the number of classifications that came through in August of 2022. And uh, the column on the right-hand side um, under each of these headings is the total number of classifications in the Met Bull to date. So, um, and that includes Antarctic uh, classifications as well. So then we move to the um, irons and stony irons. Um, you know, nothing too unusual there, um, except for that uh, mesosiderite uh, A3, uh, there are only 10 of these. And since we had two approved in August, there's, we um, increased the what we had by like 20%. So um, those are still pretty rare. Uh, and another uh, palisite uh, main group, but now we are no longer at 50, we have 51 of those. So um, um, let's yeah. move on to the um, next ones. And that would be the lunar and Martian meteorites. Uh, and we had a really rare one on here, and that is the lunar uh, Chocolictic North Site uh, classification. Now, I um, did pull these numbers back in August, but uh, when I look up the total number, I am just pulling what is current as of today. So um, ideally, it would it'd be better if it was current as of August. But so the lunar Chocolictic North Site that was classified in August was actually the fourth one. And it was the second largest to date. Um, so the fifth one, we, we won't discuss it too much, but that um, was actually approved and classified on October 1st. So um, it's a little bit more recent. And that one actually uh, is about twice as large as the previous largest one. So pretty exciting. And um, can anyone guess who um, is the main mass holder? Hmm, our friend Mark Lyon, of course. Um, all right, and then moving on to the last page of the classifications are our HED uh, meteorite classifications and just the um, rest of the achondrites. So um, nothing too rare, you know, I, I did label them as rare, but, um, you know, you, as you can see, they're pretty moderate numbers. They're just, you know, these are classifications that just continue to grow, so. Um, yeah, and that kind of wraps it up on the um, classification. So we'll move to the locations. Um, and as you know, these are kind of the usual suspects. So we don't see too many, um, you know, different countries, but I'd say that this, um, you know, the month of August had a little bit more representation from the Middle East uh, with uh, Libya on there um, and Iran. So uh, that was, they're not always on there every single month, but uh, moving on to the um, smallest total known weight. This is one of the smallest ones I have seen in a while, three grams. <laughs> so um, obviously it came from a de dense collection area in Chile. So, you know, nothing too exciting there, but the largest meteorite um, total known weight from August is one that I think I've uh, been hearing people talk about quite a bit. And that one is the, um, and I hope I'm saying it right, Chikara 001. So I do have 50 kilograms listed as the total known weight when I started putting my numbers together in August, but this one actually has been updated. Um, it was updated in September and I believe they updated it to 2.5 tons. And now they're saying there's possibly close to three tons of this material available. So that ended up being a pretty large one. So even it was the largest one even before the update, but now it kind of blows all the other ones out of the water. So um, yeah, congratulations to um, the main mass holders for that meteorite. And um, that brings us to our conclusion. Um, yes, I'm sorry if I'm not um, going into detail or um, featuring a few stories, but like I said, we're trying to get through these pretty quickly. And um, so we will be recording the September update this coming Wednesday, which I believe is November 2nd. And um, at that time, I am gonna do an extra segment on um, Antarctic meteorites. So please join us. Um, Join us live, but if you can't join us live, please check out the video on YouTube and thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe. Good job, Stu. Good job, Stu. That was Very great. Very nice. Well done.